This is the moment you all been waiting for. Errol Spence Jr. reacts to Manny Pacquiao in a loss to your Dennis Ugas. Spence was supposed to fight Ugas last night. What does he have to say? We're going to talk about that. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego in the back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. When you throw a like on the video, it goes a long way. Appreciate everybody. Errol Spence had a couple brief comments reacting to Ugas. He congratulated Ugas, but many people believe it should have been him. So he's showing love to Frank Martin in a dominant performance on the undercard. And then after the outcome, he says, man, and then he put like the pre-cry, like eyes welling up type of emojis because he knows in his heart that could have been him, should have been him. And then he got called out by Ugas. So I'm sure that's probably why he put that face. And he says, good ish Ugas. Now, the fight was fun. Ugas wants a piece of Spence and called him out. And Errol Spence retweeted it. So obviously, that's up his alley. First, first things first. And then PBC said, after beating Manny Pacquiao, your Dennis Ugas said he wanted to fight Errol Spence Jr. next. Who would you? Who would win that fight? Retweet, like for Spence, you know? So, damn, this is like... 1,100 likes for Spence to win that fight. Listen, Pacquiao's a legend. Great fight tonight with Ugas. Ugas did his thing, though. He dominated. Very classy, even in a victory. Um, you know, Ugas, grateful for the opportunity, he stepped in. But it, it begs the question, what would have happened if Errol Spence was healthy and followed through and was able to fight Manny Pacquiao? I guess we may never know, Pacquiao said post-fight, that that could be it for him. You know, that possibly very well could be his last fight. He has to mull it over. I think he said he was 60-40% sure. 60% he retires, but there's a 40. So, you know, close to half and half. I wish Manny Pacquiao the best no matter what he decides. He's given the boxing game his all. He fought with um, valor, heart, and soul. As far as Errol Spence Jr., you know, life is crazy. Things happen for a reason. And I'm not a big believer in regrets. I don't have any regrets my whole life. I've caught L's. I've made mistakes. But I don't believe in regrets, you know. The reason for me why I don't believe in regrets is because I think everything happens for a reason. And there's nothing to regret. If I didn't go through certain things... It wouldn't have led me to this exact precise moment. So I'm not a big, I'm not a big believer. I don't know what Errol Spence's belief system is, but that's just my my take on it. I don't believe him, you know. God gives his toughest battles to his toughest soldiers, and it just played out how it's supposed to play out. Ugas, congratulations to him. Errol Spence, he had it, you know, had it in the bag to at least challenge Pacquiao. Who knows what would have happened, you know. Just because Ugas beat him doesn't mean Errol Spence could do it. They have their own style, etc. Me, going into the Spence-Pacquiao fight, I told you I was rocking with Errol Spence to win. And then I told you all when he got replaced, I was going with Ugas to win. So we were we were right on account of the Ugas winning. Errol Spence, you know, you, you never know technically what could have happened. In my opinion, based on what I've seen from Pacquiao... I'm very confident in my pick that Errol Spence would still be the unified champion. No disrespect to Pacquiao, much respect to all of his accolades, his accomplishments. He's inspired a nation. He's inspired many up and coming boxers, but it just looked like Pacquiao possibly lost a step and, you know, he couldn't get off the blocks the same. So I don't see how he would have beat Errol Spence Jr. I really don't. Because Errol Spence Jr., although he doesn't fight identical to Ugas, he does enough of the same things. Like, for example, Ugas and Spence are both big welterweights. You know, definitely bigger than Pacquiao. You know, I know that for a fact that they're bigger. Because I've stood next to all of them. You know what I mean? I've stood next to them. See? 
There's a little picture of them together. I mean, it doesn't give you perception, like perspective, because Errol Spence is, is sitting down. But Errol Spence just listened to his stories. Pre accident, before he got in a car accident, he already told you that sometimes his weight would get up to 190. Pacquiao is an eight division champion. Nothing like that has been done in the sport of boxing from a male, from a male's perspective, starting off that low going up to the 150s in which he did for the Margarito fight. So at the end of the day, Errol Spence and Ugas are definitely bigger than Pacquiao. You know, long story short, the eye injury is unfortunate, but I think, I, I think truthfully, I think it would have been even worse if Errol Spence fought him because no disrespect to Ugas, I take nothing away from him. Errol Spence has had more big fight moments like, 50,000 people that's something Ugas to my knowledge hasn't done and I'm not talking about like the amateurs I'm talking about as a pro so Errol Spence had big fight experience and one thing Ugas was doing that was very very effective was the body work and jabbing I told you Manny Pacquiao struggles throughout his whole career with the same things it's just he's a phenom and He's an anomaly in the sport of boxing where despite his shortcomings that he's always showed throughout his career, he does or did enough of the right things where he could still achieve victory. And some guys are like that. Like even Roy Jones, that's my favorite fighter of all time. Roy Jones wasn't necessarily the guy that's going to be the most fundamental. He did things in accordance to how he wanted to do them. But as soon as some of that athleticism um, tapered, father time or whatever, and he became a millisecond quick, like slower, then he became ripe for, ripe for the picking. In his prime, you know, you, you might not be able to touch him, Mr. Untouchable. But you lose that little half second of speed, get older, whatever you lose. When, you, when guys, I'm telling you, boxing always works like this. Y'all always. If you're a fundamentally sound fighter, then you could fight as as long as as possible because you have offense, defense, and an overall grasp of the sweet science. You look at the Floyd Mayweathers, the B hops, Juan Manuel Marquez when he knocked out Pacquiao, he was 40 years old. These are the facts, people. Right? So you could do it. But guys like Roy Jones, guys like Pacquiao, guys like Sergio Martinez, or even the guys who weren't necessarily special athletes, but one dimensional, you know, Ruslan Provotnikov or even like a Ricky Hatton. You you can't your shelf life. Your window is, is much smaller. You know, guys like Chavez Jr., where like he's younger than Pacquiao and he's younger than Bernard Hopkins, of course, and Floyd Mayweather. But he's losing to UFC fighters, right? So, all in all, I think Errol Spence would have, I think he would have stopped Pacquiao because he has that mean streak, that aggression. And I liked a lot of what Ugas did. And I know for a fact that Errol Spence, I've seen it live. I was at the Mikey Garcia fight. He controlled Mikey with a jab. And that jab was money for, for your Dennis Ugas. So, what do you think? You got an equally big welterweight. You got a guy with a crazy jab, which Ugas had a lot of success with. And I think Errol is even more a vicious body puncher. And Ugas landed great body punches. And Errol has, a, has that fluidity with his body shots. He told you he came up in a Mexican gym and was sparring Mexican and black kids and stuff, primarily in Texas. And his trainer at one point was um, Mexican. He told you that. So he has that. Pacquiao was dramatically slowed down with Ugas's um, attempts and the shots landed to the body. You've seen Danny Garcia very hesitant. And Danny Garcia is younger than Pacquiao and stuff like that. Pacquiao, I think he said he had leg cramps, but you're a sitting duck. You're a sitting duck against Errol Spence. So... I know none of this is here nor there. I want you guys to leave comments in the comment section. And let me know what you believe would have happened. But I think Pacquiao would have been punished equally, if not worse, by Errol Spence Jr. It just didn't play out 
But, you know, on the flip side, you could say it's a good thing that insect caught his eye, the left retina tear, because you definitely don't want to fight Pacquiao if you're not healthy. You know, that's Pacquiao, you've seen what he did to Margarito's eye. You've seen what he did to David Diaz's face and Cotto and De La Hoya. You know what I mean? So you can't play about that. So it all happened how it was supposed to happen. Errol Spence, it just he couldn't he couldn't get to the fight date healthy, you know, and and your health is is more important than doing it the wrong way. Like you, you don't want to roll the dice like that. Like this is crazy as as heck right there. So that was already a roll of the dice. You don't want to play with that. And that could be why, I mean, I'm not an ophthalmologist, but at the end of the day, that could be why maybe he had uh, eye issues or a retinal tear and it just wasn't diagnosed or, or caught or worsened. You know, maybe he had it in the Danny Garcia fight and didn't have blurred vision or anything, so he didn't even know. And then he went and got it checked out and Insac seen it. So maybe through rigorous sparring, from you know in that fight in that particular fight maybe it, it just got worse and, and then you know they said hey you can't fight you can't fight Pacquiao so I know Errol Spence had to be gutted seeing Ugas Errol Spence don't seem like a hater to me so he's probably happy for Ugas but at the same time gutted because he knows that would have and should have should have been him but again everything happens for a reason let me know in the comment section, what do you believe would have happened had Errol Spence fought Pacquiao as intended? Listen, it was a great fight. I got the email from PBC. There were 17,000 plus people. I think it was 17,400. Nice, healthy crowd. You know, it's not a victory that Pacquiao probably would want to go out on. You know, maybe he'll even do a home. I think it'd be cool if Pacquiao did a like a tune-up home up home, like a homecoming fight in the philippines and then retired so he can just kind of go out not losing but who knows who knows how it all play out let me know what you believe would have happened if Derek james and errol spence went up against freddie roach and manny pacquiao in the comment section as always hate comment and subscribe to next video's ego signing off